Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Welcome to another session of Sunnah Followers Tawheed class. And for this Tawheed class, we have been focusing for the past couple of months on character building. In order to be a true, strong, believing Muslim, you have to have the character that is pleasing to Allah. And this is a process. We have to spend every day of our life is, is supposed to be spent changing the condition of ourselves to that which is pleasing to Allah. It takes a lot of time and effort because you're going to, and a lot of honesty, because you're going to have to, first of all, be honest with yourself and admit to what your bad traits are, what your bad personality traits or your bad uh, characteristics are. And that's the first step. Once you admit uh, to what you need to change, then we go through seeking the help of Allah and trying to do what is needed to change and rid ourselves of those bad characteristics that may cause Allah to dislike us rather than love us. And again, you know, every day of our life should be spent trying to earn Allah's love because Allah has promised He will never allow the hellfire to touch anyone whom he loves. So that's why we've been doing this series on character building. And yesterday, uh, we, we talked about uh, how to change ourselves. It all began with, first of all, admitting the problem. And we also talked about how Allah goes into great deal explaining to us the nature of his creation, the nature of the human being. So let's look at the questions from yesterday's lecture to see how well you understood them. Let's look at the first question. For those Muslims who do not change themselves into something that is pleasing to Allah, what does Allah say he will do as a result? There's a lot of Muslims out there who realize and recognize and know that they have bad characteristics but they're not doing anything to change them. What does Allah say will happen as a result? Anyone? Allah says he will turn away from them if they, let me take this thing off my nose in a minute. Allah says, even if they see signs, good signs, they will not recognize the signs. Exactly. Okay. Allah tells yeah. us that for those who do nothing, to change themselves, he in turn will turn his back on them. And this is why I say a lot of Muslims will come and say, oh, Sister Layla, it seems as if Allah has turned his back on me. And I always ask them, well, what are you doing that you should not do to make you feel that way? Or what are you not doing that you should do because Allah is clear, he only turns his back on us when we fail to change the condition of ourselves. Can anyone give us the verse from the Quran that is the Dalil? Can anyone give us the Dalil? I want you guys to work more on giving evidence when you speak. Allah says that for those who do nothing to change themselves, he will turn his back on them. Where's the evidence? Anissa? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I, I think I have half of it. You want the whole evidence? Yeah, just go ahead. What Read what you got. I a devil, a, a devil to you. What's it? Shaman Crash. I think he was assigned a devil to you when you're not doing right. Is that that's right? another, that's another evidence. Yeah, but that's, uh. but I want something even more concrete. Okay, Laylee, 
Laili says, Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, he will turn away his signs. Okay, read me the verse. Can somebody read the verse? Give me the verse, guys. She summarized it. I like how you summarize. I want the verse. Because you know we got people on Facebook who will be willing to uh, try to refute. Can somebody give me the verse? Yeah. Allah says, those who behave arrogantly on the earth in defiance of right, them I will turn away from my signs. Okay, Even those, okay, that's all. Those who behave yeah arrogantly and what else on the earth and defiance of right on the earth in defiance of oh, right he I will, will turn. turn away from them that's what i want i want you guys mm -hmm. to get in the habit of when you give an answer back it up with evidence because that way the people of facebook and other uh, people cannot cut you down. Otherwise, you're just speaking. So that's why I tell you guys, I told you guys yesterday, memorize that verse. Allah says that those who, who do nothing to change themselves, those who behave badly on the earth in defiance, you know that you got characteristics that you need to work on, but you defy that. Well, guess what? Allah will turn away from you. He only turns away from those of us who do wrong in defiance of right. So that's why I'll, I'll ask a person, what are you doing that you should not do? And what are you not doing that you should do? Because if you know the answers, and that means you fall in this category of a person whom he turns away from due to your defiance of what is right. Everybody understand that verse? Okay, let's look at question number two. What are two habits that man seems to never lose no matter how old he or she gets? What are the two habits that man seems to never lose no matter how old he or she gets? We talked about this. There are two personality traits and that as a human, we never seem to lose. And it doesn't matter how old we get, we still have these two personality traits. What are those two personality traits, people? Mm. alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Atifa. Okay, uh, one is greed, and the other is a hope to have more. Okay, good yeah. job, good job. The two traits that we never get rid of. No matter, you can be a hundred years old and still be greedy. Always want more. A greedy person is one who always wants more. And then the second one is endless hope. Endless hope. What is the meaning of endless hope? This is a person. This is one who, who constantly hopes for more that's the difference between the meaning of the word greed and endless hope a greedy person is a person that wants more always wants more you can have everything in the world but you're constantly wanting more and a person who endlessly hopes this is a person who is always hoping for more always hopes for more always hopes for more does everyone understand the meaning of those two words no matter how old you are you still hoping that you can be an airline stewardess that's the example i use here you are 80 years old you got one foot in the grave you look like you knocking on death's door but when you look in the mirror you still see yourself as 20 and you think that you can get a job as an airline stewardess? Not to mention the fact that you a Muslim with a hijab on and what airline is going to hire you? Even in the Muslim countries, they don't hire women with hijabs. They hire the Christian Arabs to work for them. Does everybody understand? Huh? 
Hold on. Muting. Okay. All right. So again, endless hope. These are people that sit around still, no matter how old you are, you still hoping for something that you know ain't going to happen. If you ain't an airline stewardess by now, what the heck makes you think you're going to be one at 80 years old? If you ain't got that Corvette now, by now, what makes you think you're going to get it now at 50 years old? I mean, it's time to grow up and accept reality and face reality. So these are two bad character traits that we all suffer from. Some of us have control over these two traits. Some of us do not allow our greed to take the better of us. And some of us do not sit around with endless hopes. We face the reality and we accept the cotter of a law. A person who has endless hopes, this is a person that doesn't accept the cotter of a law. And such a person could actually die an unbeliever because to not accept the decoder of a law is an unbeliever. And a person who is greedy, this is a person that never is satisfied. This is a person that has ingratitude. And ingratitude is another sin of disbelief. Ingratitude and endless hopes, these are two evil characteristics that we need to avoid as humans. To die upon these two can cause you to be in hell forever. Everybody understand that? Okay, let's look at question number three. Why does a law go into such great detail explaining the nature of the human being to us? I mean, there is no excuse for a Muslim to not understand the nature of himself because there are so many hadiths where the prophet explains the nature of the human there's so many verses of the Quran where Allah explains the nature of the human. Why does Allah go into such great explanation about the nature of the human to us? Why does he uh, go into so much explanation about our nature to us? Simple question with a very simple answer. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. He wants us to be aware of ourselves and know the nature of ourselves and what we're capable of. Exactly, so we can change. Exactly, right. simple answer. You guys make the dean too hard on yourself. These are simple answers. Allah goes into detail because he wants us to be aware of our faults and thus make the change. Basically, Allah wants the best for us, guys. Allah doesn't want to see you fail. He just knows if you're going to fail. And this is something that a lot of Muslims, Christians, and Jews don't understand. When we talk about the Qadr of Allah, Allah didn't choose you to be a Kafir. Allah didn't choose for you to go to hell. Allah didn't even choose for you to go to paradise. You made the choice. It's just that Allah knew what your choice would be. Does everyone understand that? Allah has given us the laws. He's given us the rules. He's given us the guidelines. He's even broken it down to us, the nature of ourselves. He's given us all the information we need to know about ourselves so that we can make the right choice. But many of us choose to, for, to, to pay no heed. Many of us choose to stay the way we are. He knew that you would make that choice. So that's why he's decreed for you to go to hell. It ain't because he chose it for you. You chose it yourself. Does everybody understand that? We cannot sit up and blame Shaitan for our outcome. And you can't blame Allah either. You can't sit there and say, it's your fault, Shaitan. You made me do it. Shaitan's going to tell you, no, I had no power over you. All I could do is try to seduce you 
you chose to listen to me. And on the other hand, you cannot look at a law and say it's your fault. I'm in hell. You chose for me to do this. Allah's going to tell you, no, I did not make that choice for you. I told you all about what the lawful is. I've told you what the unlawful is. I told you what your purpose in life was. I even broke it down what I expect from you to, for you to do. You knew these things, but you chose to not listen to me you chose to not believe in me so you chose to put yourself in hell so we cannot blame a law nor can we blame shaitan for what will end up being our ultimate ultimate destiny we can only blame ourselves does every muslim understand that because a lot of muslims don't they are blame a law or blame, well, since Allah know I'm going to hell, what's the point in me doing any good? The point is that he knew where you're going to go, but he didn't choose it. As long as you're breathing, you have a choice to change yourself. Allah says he will even help you. If you take the steps to him, he will help you. But he's not going to help you unless you stand up and help yourself first. Does everyone understand that? A lot of Muslims don't. Do you guys understand that? So you know that you got an anger problem. You know that you're greedy. You know that you're selfish. You know that you're ignorant of the deen. You know that you ain't got no business smoking marijuana. So why are you doing it? You have to stop. You know the dangers of this stuff. You know a law doesn't want you doing it. Why are you choosing to do it? Don't blame Shaitan. All he can do is whisper. You have the right to say, I ain't listening to you. Just like you saying you ain't listening to a law. So we have to make the right choices. That's the thing with free will. Now do you see why the other creations of Allah turned it down? That's why the sun said, I don't want free will. That's why the trees said, we don't want free will. That's why the animals said, I don't want free will because they knew there would be consequences. But man chose to take it on because man is ignorant. And we always want to be superior. And then we want to sit around and blame somebody else, blame Shaitan or blame Allah for your choices. No, you made the choice. Allah is so merciful that he said, for those of us who are humans and don't have the ability to make the choice, the pen is lifted. So don't blame Allah. If a person is mentally incompetent, that person doesn't know any better, so that person will make bad choices. Well, guess what? To show how merciful Allah is, he says, I'm not even going to hold them people accountable. I'll forgive them probably. But you, he gave common sense. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know what you're doing is bad, and you want to blame it on Allah's decree? No! Decree means I knew what you would do. Decree does not mean I chose it for you. I just knew what you were thinking. I knew what you wanted. And I knew what the choice would be if I offered it to you. But I didn't make the choice. You did. So don't blame it on the law, Muslims. Don't sit there and say, well, <laughs> pass the joint. A law decree for me to get high. So I'm going to keep on getting high. No, he didn't know. He didn't decree that. His decree was he was going to test you with the things you love the most. He tell, And he don't even hide. Allah doesn't even hide. He tells us in the Quran, I'm going to test you in life with the things you love the most, your children, your wife, your desires, your alcohol. I'm going to put them all before you and see what you choose. I'm not going to make the choice for you. I'm going to see what you choose, although I know what it is going to be. So stop blaming Allah for the re as the reason why you smoke marijuana. 
Stop blaming the law as the reason why you drink alcohol. Stop blaming Allah as the reason why you don't practice your deen. You don't practice your deen because you don't believe in Allah the way you should. Allah didn't choose that for you. You chose it. And as a result, suffer his consequence. Does every Muslim here understand that? Okay, because that's why I hope I answered that email. That was a question someone sent me saying, what's the point in quitting smoking marijuana when a law chose for me to do it? We never blame a law, just like we can't blame Shaitan. Shaitan has no power to make you choose anything and neither does a law. You did that. You choose to get high. A law just knew what your choice would be. And that's why he wrote you down to be in hell. Because he knows you weak. He knows you're worthless. He knows you have no self worth for yourself. But now he also knows if you will really stop. So he may have you written down for paradise and you just don't know yet. Cause maybe something might happen in your life that's so tragic. It'll make you stop doing it and you will stop and make the right choice. And Allah, that's why you will end up in paradise. Nobody knows what Allah knows but him. But don't blame him for making a choice. You making a choice. He just knows what your ups and downs will be and what your choices will be and what your final outcome will be. I hope I explained that because a lot of the Arabic speaking Daya can't explain it that well. Their English is not good enough. Well, alhamdulillah, I'm an Arabic Daya who was born here in America and my language is English. So I can explain it. So I hope you guys understand that. Okay, let's look at the next question. Question number four. This is a question of character building. A person is a coward. And we spoke yesterday about how Allah hates a coward. And unfortunately, a lot of us are cowards. We spoke yesterday about how those of you who want to blame Allah for your choices when he didn't make the choice and blame Shaitan for your choices when Shady didn't make the choice either. A lot of you are too cowardly to admit that you made the choice. So that's why Allah hates a coward, okay? A coward will put the blame on anyone but itself. It takes a strong person to admit that he got a problem and it only a coward will not. So let's see, a person is a coward. How will this show in the way he or she practices Islam? Let's see your answers. A person is a coward. How will this show in the way he or she practices Islam? Who's going to answer? Let's get on the mic and get busy. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I will say um, how this will show in his practice of Islam is this person blames others for their own mistakes. Okay, this such a person will blame others for his or her choices and mistakes, okay? How else? Such a person will lie. They will not own up to the truth. Such a person will fail to accept the truth. How else would it show in their practice? Make it hit the really y'all into the character and belief, which is good. Belief, make sure y'all hit the practice too. These answers okay. so far are answers that dealing with their belief system. Hit the practice of Islam too. Go okay. ahead. I would say such a person would not wouldn't be confident in doing the right thing, you know, with his religion. You know, he doesn't know how to say no or say yes to the right thing. Such a Does person will sense? lack confidence. Okay, that's all belief too. Make sure oh, you all okay. hit the practice. I said. Okay. Such a person will not pray as he should. No, I mean, I can't and say I, that. There's I, a lot I, of cowards that pray. 
Oh. Um, okay. That's why I say y'all problem is the practice of Islam. Yeah. How, in other words, how do they live Islam? Okay. Such a person will fall easily to their temptations and desire. Good job. That's practice. Such a person will fall yeah. easily. Okay. To the temptations of life. Good job. Such a person will want to fit in and imitate the Kafir. Exactly. When we talk about practice of the religion, I want you guys to understand what something that you all should have learned from day one from me. Islam is not just a religion. It's a way of life. Islam is an Arabic word that means total submission to Allah. So when I ask, how will it show and how they practice Islam? I'm basically asking, how will it show in the way they live their life? Okay, so give me some answers on how they live their life and repeat yours again, Pfizer. Such a person will go ahead because I, I forgot. Always want they, they seek to fit in and imitate the Kafir. Exactly. Such a person will seek to fit in and will imitate the Kafir or wrongdoers. Good job. Anyone else? How else will it show in how they practice? or how they live Islam. A lot Can of cowards say, pray, a lot uh, of cowards pray. Y'all see on the internet, a lot exposing a lot of famous diet. They are seen praying all the time, but look at them. So we can't use that. I wanna know how they practice the deen. Go ahead, whoever it was. Can we say that um, this person um, is a person who fears when it comes to, when they're like put in a difficult situation? They do what when they put in a difficult situation? They're like, like fear. Fear what? Like, well, they um fear whenever they're put in a difficult situation. Okay. Like they don't. Such a person will fear the difficulties of life and not be able to handle them. Just break it down. This is a person that can't handle hardship. In other words, such a person cannot handle the trials or hardships. That's practice, hardships of life. Okay, anything else? Such a person will not stand up for the wrong they see. Exactly, such a yeah. person will not Enjoin the good, nor forbid, that's also practice, the evil. Anything else? Uh, such a person will deliberately sin and try to uh, make excuses that they're not sinning. We already gave those answers. Okay. Okay, these are good answers right here. If a person is a coward, it's gonna, if your character is to be a coward, it's gonna show in how you live Islam. You will be a person that will blame others for the choices you make and your mistakes in life. You will also be a person that will fail to accept the truth. And we're gonna talk about that today. A lot of us are cowards. There's a lot of Muslims today who are cowards. They don't wanna accept the truth. And we're going to talk about that today. And I want you to ask yourself, are you a coward? And you're going to be shocked to see the answer is yes. Okay. Also, these are people who don't have confidence in themselves. These are people who fail easily to the temptations of life. These are people who want to fit in and imitate the wrongdoers and the Kaffirs. They don't want to be distinct. These are people who fear the difficulties of life and cannot handle the trials or hardships of life. These are people who do not enjoy the good nor forbid the evil. Why? Because they too cowardly. They too cowardly to stand up for what's right. They too cowardly to say no to what's wrong. Are you a coward? A lot of us are. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. The truth always hurts. 
Remember that the truth hurts. Okay, good job on that, guys. Let's look at the last question here. Here's another character building question. A person is stingy. We talked about greed. This is a person that's never satisfied with what he or she has. This is a woman that can have a hundred Jill Babs and a thousand Kimars, but she still want more just to say she got it, won't even wear it. I want that hijab. I want that Jill Bab. I want that your pair of drawers just to say she got them. Can't even wrap it. If you gave it to her, she wouldn't even know how to wrap it on her head but just want to have it. And they dare not help anybody else. They always want you stingy people. They want what you have, but don't ask them for help. They ain't going to give it. Don't ask her for a hijab. She going to tell you, I ain't giving you my hijab. Don't ask her for anything. She's going to look you in your eye and say no but expects you to give to her. And she's never satisfied. You can give her the moon. You can give her the stars and everything in the ocean. And she'll still want more. Do you guys know people like that? Maybe we looking at ourselves in the mirror. Maybe that lady in the mirror is you. Maybe that man in the mirror is you. Let's see. If a person is stingy and never satisfied, how will this show in the way he or she practices Islam? How will this show in the way he or she practices Islam, stingy and never satisfied with what they have? They can live in a mansion, drive a, a, a Cadillac, have all the clothes and food and no bills to pay, got can, but they never, they still unhappy and never satisfied. How will this show and how that person practices Islam? They will lack the ability to give. Okay, uh, that's the first thing. Such a person lacks the ability that's character. This is a um, uh, uh, belief. The ability to give whoever that is, get out of here with your phone. Get off the microphone. Such a person lacks the ability to give or help others. Get off the microphone. I can't stand that in a class. Next, anyone else? And I hope that wasn't you, Pfizer. That wasn't Pfizer. I'm sorry if it was. I would never talk to my baby that way. Hello. Anyone else? A person is stingy and never satisfied with what he or she has. How will this show in the way he or she practices this line? Come on, Can people. We say such a person thinks they're self-sufficient when Allah is the one who gave them their money. Okay, exactly. People who are stingy. These are people, such a person thinks himself to be the cause of anything good instead of a law. They will say, these are the me, me, me people. These are the me, me, me people because I did this, because I did that, because I went through this, because I went through that. How many of you know people like that? Are you looking at yourself in the mirror? It's I, 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 because of I, because of I, instead of because of Allah. It's through the mercy and grace of Allah. We'll say it's because of me, because I went to school, because I got rid of that man, because I got this job and I, I, I. Okay, good answer. Anyone else? How will it show a person is stingy and on the other hand, never satisfied? Those are two bad characteristics. Uh, such a person will become blameworthy 
they would not accept. Oh, hey, we already answered that. Okay, that's a that was for coward. Okay, we're talking about a person uh, who is stingy and yeah. never satisfied. We're we're done with the person that was a coward. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Such a person is a hoarder. Okay, yeah, these people, such a person may be a hoarder in life. There's a lot of people who are never satisfied. A lot of people who are stingy, they end up being on that television show, hoarder. They just can't let go. They live in a house with all these things that they don't need. But I just can't let it go. I just got to have it because just say I got it. I got one of them typewriters. I got one of those uh, sewing machines. I got one of those uh, pictures. They hoard just to say that they have it. Okay, that's a good one. Who else? Seems like Norto, the one giving all these answers. Y'all need to get with it. Put it back up again because it's like I have something and I keep forgetting it. Uh, how are they showing way to practice? Never said. Dang uh such a person let me see such a person would be a complainer about what Every, anything i mean they just won't see eye to eye with anything Nothing. okay remember the meaning of stingy a stingy person is a person that doesn't want to give and a person that is never satisfied is a person that wants more Come on, guys. I mean, I mean us. The rest of y'all, get on the mic. How will it show and how that person practices Islam? Such a person will suffer from jealousy. There you go. Say, yeah, Such a person yeah. has jealousy issues. Yes. What else? Such a person and suspicious. Such a person could have issues of suspicion okay y'all talking about all belief let's get to practice how are they showing how they live islam a stingy person well y'all did give one answer they don't help others a stingy person or a person that's never satisfied how does it show in how they practice the religion or how they live the religion can we say such a person is close-minded and not open-minded? Like when a person tells them they're wrong, they're like, oh, no, yeah, I'm wrong. that's also belief. Such a person is closed-minded. People who are stingy and never satisfied are closed-minded. That's why they that way. And they, um, such a person is a, a person who likes to choose and pick in his religion. There we go. I want answers relating to practice now. Such people pick and choose what parts of the dean to accept and practice and live by. Good job. Come on, more answers like that. Such a person does not live up to their means. Okay, like that we already have... covered that. They're holders or hoarders or whatever. Yeah, we let's get back to practice. Y'all got the person, character. Y'all got a complainer. Okay. Y'all got the, the, the belief system. And we already mentioned complain. I want y'all okay. to now give me answers that relate to living Islam. Mm. And the good answer right here is these are people that pick and choose what parts of the religion to accept and live by. These are people who don't help or give to others. What else in regards to practice? What are we supposed to do as Muslims? How do we live Islam? How does a stingy person or a person that's never satisfied show it in the way they live Islam? Besides so like picking and choosing. Go ahead. They will not perform they salat and they will not... Um... Such a person picks and chooses what obligations to perform. Okay, that's good. What else?
such a person rather give their time to the world worldly life instead of a law exactly such a person is more concerned with this worldly life then Islam, Jayla, what you doing? What else? Good job. Let's look at these answers. And this is all from being stingy and not satisfied. People who are stingy, people who are never satisfied with what they have, these are people who, number one, they don't help others. You can go to them and ask them to help you, and nine times out of 10, they will tell you no. Maybe you will get lucky if you on your deathbed. If you on your deathbed, you might can get some charity from them. But if you not, they going to tell you no, because it's all about them. It ain't about you. Okay. These are also people that think themselves uh, that for anything good that happened to them, they attribute it to themselves instead of a law. These are people who may be hoarders. These are people who have issues with jealousy. These are people who have issues with suspicion. They're closed minded. These are people who pick and choose what parts of the religion to accept and live by. These are people who pick and choose <coughs> what obligations to perform. These are people who are more concerned with the life of this world than the hereafter. These are also people who think they're going to live forever. They also think they can take what they got. They think that they can take what they have to the grave with them. They rather, if I can't keep it, they rather see it burn than give to somebody else. Do you know people like that? They rather see it burn. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, those kind of people, sister, um, are very arrogant too. Yes, there are also people who are arrogant. That's belief. Yeah, they they suffer with arrogance, and that's why Allah says He hates a person of greed. Greed is a sin that falls in a category of disbelief, guys. Remember, Allah says He forgives all sins except disbelief. And I'm going to teach you a class after we finish this series. I'm going to teach you guys about the sins of disbelief. There are many characteristics that are sins of disbelief. Greed is one. Holding a grudge is another. Never being satisfied is another. Ingratitude. These are characteristics of disbelief. And if you die upon those characteristics, you can be in hell forever. So we really need to work on this. And a lot of us, if we take a good hard look at ourselves in the mirror, we'll see that we suffer with these characteristics. We have some components of greed about us. We have components of ingratitude about us. We're never satisfied. We want what others have. We're never, ever, ever, Ex, you know, content with what Allah has given us. It's all we always looking over the rainbow. Why do you think The Wizard of Oz was such a great movie? It's still a classic to this day because we're always looking over the rainbow, thinking that we're going to find something better. That's the nature of man. We're never, we never realize until it's too late that everything we was looking for and wanted, we had it right in front of us and we didn't appreciate it. And oftentimes for the Muslim, it happens when that angel of death takes our soul. That's when you are like, oh my God, I should have helped people. I should have stopped always wanting what others had. I should have went out and got it myself, but it's too late. It's too late to make the change then. Okay, good job. Any questions about any of these answers? You guys did very, very good on this quiz. Any questions about any of those answers? 
You guys are getting better and better and better and better at this character building. And I really hope you're taking it uh, and using it for yourself. I know a lot of you are offended at me. I hate to say this guys, but that's how my dawa is. My dawa is based on truth and my dawa appeals to the heart, you know, and every time I teach these type of classes, I end up making a lot of enemies because a lot of people hear things that apply to them and they think I'm talking about them when they fail to realize I don't even know who you are, that I'm just teaching from what Allah says, I'm giving you the hadiths of the prophet Muhammad. And he didn't know who you were either. But a lot of people take this personal because the hardest thing for us to do is to look at ourselves and admit what our faults are. And when we hear somebody speak about faults that apply to us, we get defensive and we take it very personal. And just for me teaching about cowardliness and stuff, we had 12 people listening on Facebook. We done dropped down to seven. <laughs> and I'm sure the emails will come. How dare you talk about me, sister, when I don't even know who you are. If I saw you on the street, I wouldn't know who you were. I'm just teaching like I'm supposed to. Okay. So let me put that and that's what today's topic is going to be about the truth the truth as muslims again everything goes back to those characteristics that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us that we really need to, uh, to emphasize and we talked about trust maintaining the trust maintaining truthfulness that why is that emphasized so much because again, this is the problem with the human. You know, we don't want to accept the truth. What it say it, Latifa? You can't handle the truth. And this is so true. Why was that movie so great? You can't handle the truth. We can't handle the truth. It's the nature of the human being. We don't want to hear the truth. We don't even want to know the truth. Well, guess what? If you want to be a true believer, you have to speak the truth, even if it hurts. Even though I have dropped on Facebook now from 10 people listening to now I'm down to eight because they don't want to hear the truth. I still have to speak it. Remember, the believer is capable of committing sin because none of us are perfect, we're all human. But one thing that sets the believer out from the hypocrite is he always speaks the truth, even if it's against himself, even if it's against his relatives, even if the people don't like it. Okay? So that's what we're gonna speak about today until we can be truthful with ourselves and truthful with Allah and truthful with others will never be a true believer. And again, Allah commands us to be people of the truth. Allah created this entire universe on the basis of his love. And he has demanded of the people that we build our lives on the foundation of truth and that we make truth and straight dealing a practice of our life. How many of us are quick to say, for example, me, I don't like her. She's too direct. She's too straightforward. Well, that's how we're supposed to be. That's a truthful person. A truthful person is direct. A truthful person is straightforward. And you may not like it, but Allah loves it. In fact, Allah demands it. When the truth is lost by the people, that's when false stories, superstitions, and absurd beliefs appear. And that's when we end up leaving the true path of Islam and instead we become innovators and deviators. So thus guys, in order to be a true believing Muslim, your character must be based on truth and straight dealing. 
Listen to what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, stay away from bad thinking because bad thinking is the worst falsehood. He also said, stay away from doubtful things. Follow only those things in which there is no doubt because truth is a means of satisfaction, whereas falsehood is the cause of misgivings. Supana Allah, a lot of dire today like to lie. They wanna tell you what you wanna hear rather than tell you that what you're doing is wrong or tell you that you need to work on something, they'll smile, they'll grin, and they'll tell you the things you wanna hear so you can, they can keep you as a follower. Well, that's not a, a straightforward person. We're not supposed to be that way. We have to speak the truth, even if the people hate it. And we also have to stay away from superstition. And unfortunately, guys, many people today are superstitious. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. He said, they follow nothing but conjecture of what their own souls desire, even though there has already come to them guidance from their Lord. And they have no knowledge. They follow nothing but conjecture and conjecture avails nothing against the truth. So again, superstition. How many of people say, cross your fingers, don't step on that crack, you might get bad luck. We don't believe in luck. As Muslims, we do not believe in luck. We believe in the Carter of Allah. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So we have to free ourselves of falsehood and that includes superstition. We have to always speak the truth even if the people don't wanna hear it. Remember, one of the companions tells us the prophet didn't hate anything as much as he hated lying. And if he received information from a person that lied, he would throw away that person's respect and honor until that person repented. So all it took is one time to come to the prophet and he catch you in a lie. If he caught you in that lie one time, he would not deal with you anymore unless you repent it. And that's how we have to be. That's why we have to be careful of the people we take our, our knowledge of Islam from. If Allah exposes these people to be innovators and Allah exposes them to be liars, you shouldn't be so quick to forgive them because these people put themselves in, in positions of power and leadership and respect. And when they lied, they failed you. So they have to earn that respect back. But nowadays we're so misguided, Allah can expose a person to be an innovator. He can expose a famous speaker to be a rapist. And we're quick to say, okay, I forgive you. No, he violated the trust with Allah. To be a dyer, this is an amina between you and Allah. Allah says, don't sit with the people who do wrong. Don't sit with the innovators and don't sit with the people who do wrong. This person violated a trust between himself and Allah and he violated a trust between you and him. So you have to distance yourself from this person like the prophet would do. You have to earn my respect back. You have to earn my trust back because you violated it. You can't just say you sorry when you've been exposed as an innovator. That's the worst sin you can do besides associate partners. You can't just say you sorry after you've been busted raping and having sex with women. I'm sorry, that's one of the 10 commandments. You have to earn the people's trust back. You got to step down from teaching, step down from lecturing. Show us that you are sincere by stepping down out of that position that you gave yourself, okay? And that's how our prophet was. If a person proved to be dishonest, he would have nothing to do with that man in regards to his respect and honor until he repented. Also, another companion says, for, for, for the prophet of Allah, falsehood was the worst habit in a person. If a person lied in his presence, 
That person's thought always troubled him until the time that he was told that the person repented. So again, guys, Islam commands for us to be people of the truth. And to be a believer, you have to understand that to be a person who is not true, this is a curse. And again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every evil can be found in a believer except dishonesty. And the Prophet was asked, can a Muslim be a coward? Yes. Can a, a, a believer be a miser? Yes. Can a believer be a liar? No, no, no. So again, the people of truth are people who are honest in their behavior, in their character, in their, their thinking. And they're not going to sugarcoat the dean. They're not going to smile and grin in your face and stab you in the back. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about how he had a dream and he saw two men and they came to him and said, any man whom you see talking by widening his jaws, consider him a liar. He will tell a lie, which is copied till it is talked about in the entire world. And he will go on doing this until the day of judgment. So again, a liar, a person that you can't trust, a person that is dishonest, a person that doesn't speak the truth, a person that's afraid to stand up for the truth. That person is not a believer. Does everybody understand that? And we all need to purify our character from falsehood. Purify your character from that. And that includes making promises that you don't want to keep. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are three people who will never enter paradise. One is the old man, a man or a woman who Allah blessed with a long life. You live to see the age of 30, 40, 50 or more and you are still having illegal sexual intercourse. This is a person that will never enter paradise because he took his desire for sex over a law after a law that gave him a long life. This is an unbeliever. The second that will never enter paradise is a man who tells lies. He can't be trusted. And the third is a poor man who got the nerve to think he's better than others. So again, how many of us fall in those categories? I told you guys, I'm going to do a series on the sins of disbelief. A lot of us are doing the actions of an unbeliever, even though we claim to be a Muslim or a believing Muslim. Okay? Also. So many of us lie on the prophet. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the consequence of lying on me is not as bad as it is for lying on anyone else. Let the man who purposely tells lies about me take his seat in hell. You know, just this week, I had to reprimand a man on Facebook because he had the nerve to say that to smile is not a sooner. When all the prophet did was smile, there's numerous hadiths of how the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would smile so large that you could see his molar teeth. Be careful to not take hadiths and misconstrue the meaning of them. Be careful to not take verses of the Quran and misconstrue the meaning of them. If you don't know, shut up. Stop pretending to be people of knowledge when you are not. Stop wanting to be on top because people on top often end up in the bottom of the hellfire. Okay? Wake up, people. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that one of the signs of the last hour will be that the truth will disappear and the people will become dishonest with one another. 
This is happening now. He told us in the last period of my nation, there will come people who will be deceitful liars. They will tell you things which you would have never heard before. Beware of them. Do not let them misguide you and do not let them involve you in their corruptions. He's talking about today. We're living amongst the Ruwaybed, the people who are nothing but deceitful liars, but they have beautiful faces and beautiful accents. They'll sit here and smile in the video camera for you, tell you all the nice things you want to hear, and they're just crooked, corrupt, low-life people who don't even know where Allah is. They can't even answer a basic question of Islam, like where is Allah? So again, guys, we keep going back to these same hadiths on truthfulness. The Muslim character is supposed to be comprised of it. The Muslim's actions is supposed to be composed of it. Even if it hurts, we're living in the days in which the truth is regarded as bad and lies are regarded as truth. We have to free ourselves from the sh these shackles and learn to be more honest in our personal dealings with each other, learn to be more honest in our personal dealings with Allah, and learn to be truthful even if it hurts. So we're going to stop right here for today. I want you guys to ponder these hadiths. I want you guys to take good long looks at yourselves tonight. That's your homework. Ask yourself, are you a coward? Ask yourself, do you suffer with stinginess? Ask yourself, do you suffer with ingratitude? Then ask yourself, are you a person of the truth? Do you speak the truth even if it hurts? Are you straightforward in your dealings with others? Are you direct, straight to the point? Or do you sugarcoat your way through life? Be real, answer, and then change the condition of yourself. All right, so we're gonna stop right here for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atu.